In this lesson, we'll continue adding both color and value to our character's face. All right, great. So this is kind of where we ended up in the last lesson. I've started to work down into her neck and chest area some. But looking at this, let me just not rotate my canvas here. Let's just zoom out. If you ever rotate your canvas accidentally, you're having problems getting it right back where it was, you can always hit Control-0 to kind of uh, fit that into view. So um, like I was saying, one thing that's standing out to me right now is kind of the darker areas that we've started to establish. There's a pretty high level of contrast between these lighter areas and those darker areas. So I'm going to work to kind of bring those together here in this lesson. So um, now if we have some time at the end of the lesson, we're going to kind of work to maybe desaturate some of those shadowed areas just a little bit. But uh, let's come in here. Again, I'm working on this third tab from the left and make sure my colorless blender is turned off. And let me just come in here with a little bit bigger brush and kind of look and see what that looks like. See, we can get to about there, which looks like a nice tone that would help us blend some of these together. Now, also, if this looks a little bit different in areas, I did come in with my eraser and just kind of ran it along the edge. And I'll do that from time to time as I'm working with markers, uh, at least in Sketchbook Pro, uh, just to kind of clean up the edge so I can get a little better bead on what the values are looking like. So, and if I need to, we can come in here and just kind of blend, do a little blending in there. I'm going to hit that a couple more times here. And just blend that together some. Try not to obliterate her chin too much. So it's kind of this uh, this process of alternating back and forth between blender and marker. So uh, maybe we want to come in here, add a little bit more red underneath her chin, kind of down into here. We could do something like that. Maybe run that up the other side as well. And then come in with our colorless blender and just sort of soften that edge. Sort of like so. Now I'm going to hit the S key because I know the last brush I had was my eraser. And I can just come in and quickly run that eraser right along the edge of her face, just like that. So again, I'm using the eraser in this Copic Marker Illustration uh, brush set that I showed you early on in this course. Now, um, also starting to notice some things, for example, kind of where the collar is pushing up against her neck. Let me switch back to my marker. And make sure that colorless blender is turned off. Should have kind of a, a shadow that's starting to kind of fall right there. Just pull this out a little bit. And I want to come down here and grab sort of a color like that as well. So we'll start to kind of work that in, in some areas here. Just kind of like that. And you know, while there was a pretty large amount of contrast between the dark areas and the light areas, and we're working to blend that in, I'm also looking at those dark areas and thinking those shadows could be a little deeper as well. So uh, that's what I just did with that purple, or that uh, kind of that burgundy purplish color. Just ran it right over there, and, and I'm starting to deepen the shadow just a bit. Maybe run it right around in there. And I could even probably run it along this back edge here. All right, fantastic. I'm going to go back and kind of switch modes again, back to kind of bringing these values together. So I'm going to look at what that brush looks like, or that color rather. I'm going to come in and kind of hit the edges of her eyes, make those look a little more like sockets. And where's a purple that I can hit that with? Last thing you want to do is get in a big hurry when you're working with markers, uh, especially when you're trying to do a lot of heavy blending and things of that nature. And we'll come back over here. Let's grab this one. Turning off our blender. 
me go for this one first. There we go. Again, we're working kind of back and forth between these two right here. And another thing you should pay attention to is if um, your highlights start to look a little bit red. You can notice here we're starting to bring a lot of these colors right here into the areas where there's highlights. Well, those are much redder colors. Uh, and remember, our, our light source is warm. So at some point, we may want to come over here and start looking at ways to kind of layer in some yellows, um, some of these more uh, desaturated variants off this yellow tab. Now that's a bit far. I got into my highlight a little bit with that one, but you can kind of see if we zoom out how that's starting to warm up as it works its way towards our light source or towards our highlight rather. I'm going to be really sort of uh, sparse with this yellow at first, I don't want it to get too out of hand uh, because obviously she, <laughs> you get too much yellow in the skin tones and she'll start to look a little jaundiced, but um, that's okay. We'll just kind of work with what we've got here. And we'll just kind of shave that back. And I'm actually going to come back in here and work to blend that in a little bit right there. That highlight on her neck is really pretty large right now. So we're going to kind of blend that in. There's really no reason for there to be a hard edge on these shadows under her neck, with the exception of the one that her jaw is creating. Because again, that jaw is, is the one that's kind of casting that harsher shadow there. I'm actually going to come over here and grab maybe this purple color, see if we can't even kind of desaturate that, make it a little bit more purplish. All right, fantastic. So uh, this is starting to look pretty good. Now, obviously, we could spend a lot of time working on her face here. Uh, you know, we can sit here and go back and forth and back and forth. You see that? I've got a little bit of a dark color when I mixed right there. It's because my blender was dirty. And you can see the result of it right there. Uh, that's what I was speaking about earlier on in this course when we were first looking at how to use the colorless blender. And I want to come down here a little bit. Start to kind of cross-reference my, uh, my pencils. Make sure we're not deviating too much. Sometimes you can put down just a little piece or a little stroke like that and just kind of work to blend it in if you want to darken a certain area up. I'm just hitting the S key on my keyboard to kind of alternate back and forth between my eraser and my marker. I'll just come in and hit that again in there. Turning on my blender. So you can see how we're starting to pull out some of the details in her face that really weren't there in the line work. Things like the form of her nose, um, the, the, the sockets in her eyes. Now again, like I mentioned before, we can come in here and start to run some cooler colors over some of these colors that are a bit more red to kind of pull them back and tame them back some. So. Uh, for example, let's see what this color looks like. See, this is kind of a cool, desaturated purple. If we want to, we could come in and start to kind of run that over some of these areas that maybe seem a bit red. Might even come in and grab a little darker version of that. That's going to add sort of a really nice shadow there. All right, fantastic. So um, in this lesson, we've continued to build on to the skin tones of our character's face. Uh, ultimately, it's kind of about bringing those highlights together with those shadows that we've kind of started with, and working from light to dark. But if we kind of make a skip 
and go too dark too quickly, we need to kind of find the middle ground, find where those values meet and, and bring them together. And we've started to do that pretty nicely here because the transition between these shadows and these highlights isn't quite so jarring for me right now. So um, let's go ahead and spend one more lesson on her face. Uh, we've got our eyes left to do, so we'll go ahead and knock that out in the next lesson.